Hi, welcome back. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel for future videos and notifications. Very much appreciate it. In this video, we're going to go over some of the critical mathematics and, and uh, concepts that you need to really understand polarizability and polarization. And we're going to use this model of an atom right here to do this. Now, in the center, I mean, I've indicated just a positive charge, but there could be many, many protons in there, and they all have a positive charge. But they're all confined here to a very, very small volume. And for most purposes, you can more or less treat it as a single point, like a point charge. And then out here, you can have electrons out here. And notice there's a distance say between each electron in the nucleus, but there's also a theoretical distance between two individual electrons. So this orange R right here is called the inter-electron distance or inter-electron radius, okay? And then this is just the electron nucleus radius, all right? So we're gonna start with just a definition. The work is equal to the change in kinetic energy. That's the work kinetic energy theorem what we also know is from conservation of energy that the change in kinetic energy in the absence of springs is equal to the negative change in potential energy, which just implies work is equal to the negative change in potential energy. Now, I'm going to go ahead and express this in integral form. And normally, remember work here, I can just put as F times dr. Now, normally, you're probably used to seeing this as F times dx, okay? However, because we're dealing with atoms, and atoms are generally spherical, it's a lot easier to deal with polar coordinates. And since electrostatics already deal with polar coordinates, I'm just going to substitute dx for dr. It still works. F dr, and that's equal to the integral of du, which is just the change in potential energy. Now, this force, what I'm going to do is I'm going to substitute it with this business right here, all of this, and just drop the dr down. So the dr is going to drop down here. Essentially, the electrostatic force is going to be K, Coulomb's constant, times the charge of any electron, which is the same, negative 1.602 times 10 to the minus 19th Coulombs, times the total charge of the, of the nucleus. So Q sub P, you just add up all the protons in there and then multiply times 1.602 times 10 to the negative 19th Coulombs, and then divide by the square of the distance times dr. That has to equal the negative change in potential energy. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this charge of the electron and I'm just going to move it outside the integral. And you'll see why in a minute. Because now I have the charge of the electron times K, Coulomb's constant, times the charge of the nucleus divided by R squared times dr. And that equals the negative change in potential energy. Now why is this important? Well, it turns out that this right here is an important quantity. When you integrate this, you get voltage. So this term right here, just this by itself, this is the electric field. That is just electric field, but when you multiply E times dr and then integrate it, that's the negative voltage, okay? In other words, it comes from the derivative of voltage with respect to radius is the negative electric field. So if I take dV, that equals negative E dr, integrate this, and I get that the voltage or negative voltage is equal to integral of E dr, and that's what I have here. And that has to equal the negative change in potential energy. Now notice here, let me go ahead and do this. Here, notice I have two negative signs. They'll just cancel. And so what I ultimately get here is the following, is that the change in potential energy is equal to the voltage times the charge of the electron. Okay? So a voltage develops when you have two different charges separated by a distance in space. Okay, so in other words, if I had a positive charge here, another positive charge there, there's some distance between those charges, right? Some distance D, and as a result, there's a voltage that develops because there's two charges separated by a distance. Okay, that's when any time you have that, there's a voltage associated with it. If you multiply that voltage times the charge, of say this one right here, if it's the voltage due to this one, multiply by this charge, you get the potential energy between the two charges. Okay, so why is this important? Well, if I were to look at the, the electron being separated from the nucleus, well, there should be a potential energy associated with an electron being away from the nucleus, right? 
being some distance away. But also, there should also be a potential energy of the electron being some distance away from the electron. And this potential energy can really add up because there can be a ton of electrons, okay? And they all have some distance between each other, right? Now, if you wanted to find the potential energy between two local electrons in an atom, that's given by the potential energy between two electrons is given by Coulomb's constant times the charge of one electron, that's just E sub I, where I is one electron, over R, times the charge of the second electron, J, where I does not equal J. So this is the charge of two different electrons and the potential energy due to both of them being some distance apart. Okay, so that's really important. Another thing that's also important is when we look at uh, potential energy as a function of R. Okay, so what I want you to notice is the following. Notice that as we progress this way in terms of increasing the radius, okay? Notice as we go this way, what happens to the potential energy? As we increase R, notice that potential energy drops, okay, overall. And that's because when radius increases, particularly of an atom, the volume increases, right? Remember we said in another video, we said that the volume of an atom is equal to four-thirds pi r cubed, where the rate r is the radius of the atom. So as the radius increases, the potential energy drops. And that's because there's more volume available for the electrons to occupy. And if there's more volume, there's a greater distance between the electrons, and so there's less potential energy that develops. Okay? So where does that come in handy? Well, we're going to continue this ultimately in the next video where we actually look at the theoretical part of polarizability.